All right, guys, today I'll show you the easiest way to install a Pi-hole DNS server on a Raspberry Pi 4, and then we'll install it into our network. And to make this video simple and easy to follow, we'll break it down into chapters. That way, if you mess up or you miss something, you can go back and rewatch it. And before we get started, I wanna talk about the location of your Raspberry Pi DNS server. As you can see, we have ours in our network panel, and we installed it here for two reasons. One, convenience. The second reason, the Raspberry Pi 4 is loud. You hear that? So I don't recommend you put this in your bedroom or your office because the spinning fan is kind of annoying. And believe it or not, this fan is on quiet mode. All right, guys, before we get started, this is the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to use as our custom DNS server, our Pi hole. So before we get started, this will cost you about $139. That's what I paid for this. You can get a Raspberry Pi 3 for cheaper, I'm sure. Look on eBay as well. You may want to try to get one on eBay. But I popped mine. I got mine new. So... I got it in a kit and it came with a 32 gigabyte uh, SSD, which is perfect for this size here. Well, you know, probably more than we're gonna need, but perfect. Uh, as far as setting this up, make sure your heat sinks are all set up on the chips and make sure your fan is plugged in. Just a little hint here. I plugged mine into the red uh, pin into uh, pin one and the black pin in the, into pin 14. You could do pin two for the red one. Um, I do the pin one for the quiet mode. I like it. I don't want it to be loud or anything. So and then you put the case on top like so, like that. There you go. And you can see in the, over here all the ports. Um, we are going to put the power into this and we'll plug this into Ethernet, into one of our Ethernets on our switch, on our network, and then we're good to go. Now we need to go to the computer and then go ahead and set up our SD card before we do anything else. So let's go to the computer first and get this all set up. Okay, for the first step, we need to download three different types of software. First is Diet Pi. Go to dietpi.com, go to download, and look for Raspberry Pi. And we'll download the first link at the top. Save it, and to save time in this video, I'm not gonna show the extraction process. So after you download it, extract the Diet Pi files. Now go to bolina.io backslash etcher, and then hit download, then save the file, and then once again, extract the file and install it. Now go to putty.org and download one of these putty files. Choose the correct file for your system. And just a heads up, this is not a zip file. Just double click the icon and hit run. And we're gonna use this program to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. You could always plug in a monitor, keyboard, and mouse directly into the Raspberry Pi, but using SSH is much easier. Okay, now we've downloaded all our software. We downloaded Putty, installed it. We downloaded uh, Diet Pi, installed it. And we downloaded Etcher as well. So now all we gotta do is take the SD card. We're gonna plug it into the computer. So click on Flash from File. And now find the Diet Pi file that you just downloaded. And from here, go ahead and select the micro SD card. And then hit Select. Then click flash. I'm gonna fast forward this process. It takes a few minutes. And if you like this video, make sure to give a thumbs up and share it. Now remove the SD card from the computer and install the Raspberry Pi. All right, now that we're done, insert into your Raspberry Pi. We're in there. And we're gonna plug this in to one of our network cables. All right, here's the Raspberry Pi. It's in my network panel right now. I'm just gonna set it like this until I get everything set up and then I'll probably go ahead and install it somewhere in the panel. But a network cable plugged into here and I plugged it into my Ruckus switch power on here. So there's a power switch, turn it on. See the light going here. We're gonna give it about five minutes to connect to the network to obtain an IP address. And then we're gonna log into the router and then we'll find the Raspberry Pi's IP address. And then we can SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now you want to log into your router and go to your network map or device list and look for Diet Pi. Once you find that, click on device information and it will show the IP address. And the IP address is 192.168.1.248. You want to make sure to write that down or remember it. Now we'll go back and launch PuTTY and go into SSH. And we're going to use that IP address to secure shell into the Raspberry Pi. And once we're in the Raspberry Pi, first click on accept, type in root, 
and password is Diet Pie. After you read all the information, hit OK, and now Diet Pie will install. This installation process takes about four or five minutes, so we'll go ahead and fast forward through this. Now go ahead and opt out of the survey, and here you can change the default password. I'm going to skip this to save time, but I do recommend you change your password. And once again, we're not going to change anything right now, and I definitely recommend that you change these. But for now, I'll hit cancel and hit cancel as well, and the installation will continue, and we'll fast forward through this too. Next, you want to go to install, and now hit OK. And once again, I'll fast forward through all this. OK, now Diet Pie is done installing. Now it's time to install the Pihole DNS server. OK, now we need to go to the GitHub page for the Pihole project. And this page has a command that we're going to copy and paste into our Raspberry Pi. OK, now go back to the terminal, right click on the command line, and then hit Enter. And Pihole is now installing. Congratulations. And like before, I'm going to fast forward through the installation. We're going to try to keep this video as short as possible. This installer will transform your device into a network ad blocker. The Pihole is free, but powered by your donations. So if you enjoy the software, you can go to that website and make a small donation. The Pihole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. And go ahead and click Yes. And here we can select our upstream DNS provider. I'm going to scroll down to Custom. I use Cloudflare's custom DNS to block malware and adult websites. So if you want to use the same one I'm using, just follow my steps. Otherwise, choose a different DNS server. It's up to you. So now hit custom. And we're going to type in 1.1.1.3, comma, space, 1.0.0.3. And then hit OK. And go ahead and hit yes to confirm. Pihole relies on third party lists in order to block ads. Hit enter to use that list. Do you wish to install the web admin interface? Select yes. And hit enter again for recommended. And hit enter again. And hit enter again. And now Pihole is finishing up the installation. And once again, we'll fast forward through this. Configure your devices to use the Pihole as their DNS server using. And we have to create a static IP address for our Pihole DNS server. And make sure to write down the password for your admin page or take a picture with your camera. Hit OK. Now we have to configure the static IP address. So copy and paste Diet Pi config, hit Enter, and go down to number 7, Network Options Adapters. Now go to Ethernet, and at the top, make sure the mode is static. For my situation, when I installed this Raspberry Pi into my network, it put the Raspberry Pi on an IP address that was 148 IP addresses from my starting IP address range of 192.168.1.100, which means that when DHCP hands out new IP addresses after the lease time is up, the new IP addresses will never get close to my static IP address of 192.168.1.248. It's just too far away. We have around 50 devices in our network. So the last IP address to be used on the DHCP server would be 192.168.1.150. So make sure to use the same method when you create a static IP address. Now hit OK. Hit OK again. Go ahead and hit OK again. Hit OK again. Now exit the interface. Then log in back to your router and go to local network. We have to change the static DNS. This number has to be the static IP address of your Pi-hole server. So type that in and hit apply. Give the network a couple minutes. Now open your web browser and type in the IP address of your Pi-hole, 192.168.1.248. And click on that link right below the Apple. This takes you to the admin page. Now go to login and type in that password that we saved from earlier. Now it's time to add some block lists. Go to firebog.net and highlight and copy and paste any text in green and bulleted with a tick. These are least likely to interfere with browsing. So right click and copy it. Then go back to your pie hole and paste it into the address bar and then hit add. In order for the block list to work, 
you need to go to online update right here and click update. Depending on the amount of text that you copy and pasted, this may take several minutes. And here we go, we're all done. And this is the Pi-hole dashboard. If for some reason your dashboard is blank and has no information, recheck your router settings. Make sure the router DNS matches your Pi-hole DNS IP address. If it doesn't match, this will not work. Now is the real test. Let's check a few popular websites and see if the ad blocking works. And as you can see, no ads. Typically the ads will be at the top and the sides of the pages. And these websites have no ads. Fantastic. So I recommend a GitHub to copy and paste all the green links into your block lists. These links will block ads, tracking, and malicious websites. And remember, your Pi hole is only as good as your block lists. And as you can see, we mounted our Raspberry Pi 4 into our network panel. And when mounting this Raspberry Pi, make sure the fan is pointing out. This allows for hot air to escape. And the Raspberry Pi does get kind of warm. And yes, the fan is kind of noisy. So don't put the Raspberry Pi in your bedroom or your office. So guys, if you found the video helpful, please give a thumbs up and share it. And please consider subscribing to our channel. And make sure to activate the bell icon so you're notified when we upload new content. Thanks again for watching. You guys are awesome. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace. You need a home DNS server. <laughs>